Welcome back everyone to the State of the Nation. Now, one of the most significant missing pieces of this economic puzzle is China. Where is China? Usually, as I've told you on many occasions, China has been a strong supporter of Sri Lanka for many years. Now, from the onset of uh, Prime Minister Sirimao Bandar Naika's time to current President Gotabe Rajapaksa, China has been a strong ally of Sri Lanka. They fought for us on the global stage, helped us economically, and more so, they've stood by this country through thick and thin. As I try to dig deep into finding what's going on, many intellectuals and academics I spoke to tells me that one of the main reasons for this is, for China's silence, is Sri Lanka's recent trend of uh, leaning towards the West. If you look at uh, certain steps taken by Finance Minister Basil Rajpaksa in the recent past, like the ad hoc attempt to give the Yugadanavi power plant contract to a US firm, now the uh, allegiance to go to Western nations to get support for our financial crisis and also more so or less um, seeking help only uh, from India has uh, kind of put a wrench in the relations with Asia's big brother. Also the recent fertilizer matter where we rejected Chinese fertilizer that was safe but officials here magically found hazardous bacteria which later disappeared under a Singaporean microscope have indeed strained our relationship with this friendly nation. Then there's the issue where President Gotabe Rajpaksa has not yet visited China since his inauguration as president. He did go to India first, but has yet to visit China despite an active uh, invitation by the Chinese president for a state visit. What puzzles me is why we didn't go to China to ask for this support in solving our dollar crisis before going to the IMF. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa's government, China was our strongest ally. As a result, by now, uh, China is the biggest contributor to the Sri Lankan aid. Our relationship has uh, is in, in a kind of a trouble at this moment, we must admit that. There are several reasons. You know, it is customary that uh, head of state of Sri Lanka first visit India. Soon thereafter, he or she goes to China. For last two and a half years, he failed to visit China despite there is a pending invitation from Chinese president. Secondly, as you know, they secured this FSRU and gas supply project mm -hmm to uh, uh, power plants in Sri Lanka. It was secured by a Chinese company going through a competitive bidding process. The government decided to ignore that competitive bidding process and to offer this to New Fortress Energy, which is a company which did not participate in this process. Okay. Thirdly, uh, there were three, uh, three power pr uh, plants to be installed Sample. in three islands in uh, of Nathan. So, uh, again, ADB funded project, competitive bidding process was uh, followed, and a Chinese company secured the, uh, all three power plants. And no Indian company participated in the bidding process, but once they realized that a uh, Chinese company has secured all three th power plants, they offered a 75% grant and 25% loan to uh, in, uh, install and establish those power plants there. So, China is again upset as a result. Fourthly, you know the famous, infamous organic fertilizer ship mm -hmm. issue. Yes. Sri Lanka filed a case against a company which brought a lot of publicity yeah. in the world media and company got distributed as a result is their main allegation. Fifthly, as you may have heard, there were certain issues raised by China about uh, corruption involved in offering subcontracts in, uh, in that phase. I can't remember exactly mm -hmm. what that phase was. So because of these five reasons, uh, Sri Lanka-China relationship is not at its best. Now China is one of the biggest single nations that has contributed uh, in, um, in a big way to Sri Lanka's economic story. However, whilst we are looking for new export markets, China's market is something we barely manage to capitalize on. 
Now there is an FTA in the discussion but this is something Sri Lanka uh, certainly can gain a lot and would help us to not purely depend on matters like the GSP plus scheme where the EU is trying to push their political agenda through. So it doesn't seem like it would be in our best interest to move away from China. You mentioned about China. <coughs> I think you're right. We seem to be drifting away from China. It's not a wise thing. It's not a wise thing. We should be keeping our cards, playing our cards in a balanced way. But this is again politics. It's seemingly, if you're playing that politics, we're going to get hammered in the worst scenario. Well, joining me now is our own Dani Duitanamasam, who's at the data wall, and he's going to take a closer look at, at what uh, opportunities lies in China for Sri Lanka. Dani, what do you got for us tonight? Yes, Mahesh. Something we're going to try and look within this segment is the exact volume, the magnitude of the Chinese market, and what exactly we as Sri Lankans could really focus on when looking at this huge market. Now, this is a look at what the import value of China is. Now, since China is a production hub, a manufacturing hub that is well known to the entire world, over two trillion imports happening within China. Now, that is the US dollar value of the amount of imports that are coming in to the country. If we take that same thought process forward, what exactly does Sri Lanka contribute in this entire mix? 3.5 billion as of year 2020. Uh, now this, in comparison to 2 trillion, a quite a small number, but you see the potential, the magnitude that we can reach out to. If we take that same thought process forward, we look at what exactly is China importing. Now, as I started with the, uh, as we started this segment, it is a manufacturing hub, high-end products that are coming out of China, quality assurance, a lot of things that are happening. Majority of this, over 500 billion US dollars, spent on electrical and electronic equipment. This primarily is from nations such as South Korea, nations such as Japan. Now, this is because of the sole purpose of value addition. Now, bringing in these products, making better products within that one country. Something I want to take your attention to is pharmaceuticals, rubber, and fish. Areas that Sri Lanka could really focus on. Pharmaceuticals amounted to over 34 billion. Uh, rubber amounted to over 16 billion. And fish and aquatics amounted to over 12 billion. Certain areas that even Sri Lanka could go for a monopoly over certain things that our, our, export, our export managers, people that are really trying to export into this Chinese market should really focus on. Over to you, Mahesh. I hope uh, our business community indeed uh, look at the, those kinds of data and actually take uh, uh, initiative to get into this uh, market which we have barely scratched. That is the Thanabas and other data wall. Thank you very much. Let's get uh, more context. Joining me now is the Sri Lankan ambassador in China, Dr. Palita Kona from Beijing. Uh, thank you very much, uh, ambassador. Good to see you. Well, um, so the whole world knows Sri Lanka is undergoing an economic crisis. In the past, We've seen that when Sri Lanka is experiencing any type of crisis, China is always there to help. But this time around, there seems to be a bit of a lackluster from China's side. Is this silence attributing to the westernized economic approach the current finance minister is opting for? Uh, thank you for that very important question, Mahesh. I don't believe that China has changed its approach at all. Uh, they are. Uh, engage with Sri Lanka. We talk to them all the time in Beijing. Uh, what you see as a lackluster approach might be the result of a very mature economy taking its time to respond to Sri Lanka's needs. China has responded very positively to almost every one of our requests so far. But China is an economy that takes its time to respond. It's a very uh, mature economy. It's like any other Western economy. When you make a request, you don't have a response immediately. It's unlikely. Uh, and China is the same. Uh, processes are going through. We have asked for uh, assistance with our imports. We have asked for assistance with uh, our repayments. Uh, we know that. Uh, and I, as the ambassador and this mission, knows that the Chinese authorities are going through their internal processes to respond to us. I'm, I'm certain that at the end of the day, there will be a positive response. China has always stood by us uh, through thick and thin when others were not standing by us. I'm certain that at this stage also, China will help us out. But again, you have to remember that it's not only China that has to come to the party. We also have to do certain things to help ourselves. Uh, for example, we need to make 
a concerted effort to improve our exports, especially to the Chinese market, which is everybody else's most lucrative market. Sri Lanka needs to do much more and the initiatives have to come from Sri Lanka. We have suggested many initiatives to Colombo, uh, including the conclusion of a free trade agreement, or at least starting negotiations on one. Uh, let's hope that we will do our part while the Chinese will do their part. Uh, and it takes time it, it's in their own way. True, true indeed. Now, we recently uh, saw a currency swap and several loans with China. Do you think uh, if Sri Lanka makes a plea, uh, we can actually get a bailout from China? I think uh, a bailout is a wrong uh, expression to use in this context. Sri Lanka is going through a difficult period. They've asked for a currency swap and it has been made available. They've asked China to provide us with credit facilities for importing Chinese raw material for, uh, for our garments industry. And perhaps uh, we may be able to use a credit facility for some of our in the other industries also. China, uh, I know they are now considering these two requests at the highest levels. Uh, I'm certain that sooner than later, uh, China will comply with our request because Everyone knows that Sri Lanka is in this dire situation due to, mostly due to circumstances beyond its control. And also you have to remember that the world is going through a difficult situation. In Australia yesterday, petrol was selling at $2 a liter. Uh, in America, uh, a couple of days ago, petrol was selling at $6.45 a gallon. Uh, so, it's not only Sri Lanka that is facing these uh, difficulties. And there are supply chain problems in, uh, in the US also, in the richest country in the world. So poor little Sri Lanka uh, is having its own share of pain. And of course, I have to say that this share of pain is uh, accentuated, magnified due to current circumstances. So I'm, I'm, I'm certain that China understands this, and China has always come to our assistance in the past. During the war, it was China that stood by us during a very difficult period. Uh, then again, during the pandemic, China gave us 26 million doses of vaccine, three of which were a gift to Sri Lanka. So, and the relationship is a long-standing relationship. It's, the political relationship is close and warm at the moment. Uh, I do not think that we need to have any doubts about our bilateral relationship. It's, uh, it's in, in very good hands at present. To uh, Ambassador, very quickly, President Gotabe Rajapaksa is uh, yet to visit China. Why do you think uh, there is a delay and is that ever going to happen very, uh, anytime soon? Uh, I know that our president President Rajapaksa, Gotabe Rajapaksa, is scheduled to visit China. And the Chinese have said that it will happen as soon as the pandemic-related restrictions are, are relaxed. Uh, at present, a visit will not produce the results that both sides want to achieve from such a visit. Uh, the, it, it would be limited to the capital of China, and then that's it. I personally think that uh, in order to create a high degree of awareness of Sri Lanka, of what Sri Lanka can export to China, and the need for Chinese investments in Sri Lanka, the president uh, may have to visit more than the capital. He'll have to visit the industries, the agricultural zones. Remember that China has eliminated poverty completely. This is the one country in the world that has done that. And there are things that we can learn from what the Chinese achieved in such a short period. So uh, personally, I think a visit has to be properly orchestrated so that the president will uh, have the opportunity to see as much as possible during a state visit of that nature. To do that, I think it is necessary that the pandemic-related uh, 
travel restrictions are relaxed. And we were hoping that the travel restrictions will be relaxed in the coming weeks, coming months. But there has been a spurt of in infections in this country. Uh, I think this might result in any plans to invite an important foreign leader like President Gotabe Rajapaksa. The, 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 the plans may be modified as a result of this current uh, situation in this country. So I, I, I have no, uh, no doubts about that. The president will visit China and it will happen sooner than later. True indeed. Uh, I, I would really like to talk more, but uh, we're running out of time, Ambassador. Thank you very much. Uh, Sri Lankan Ambassador to China, Dr. Palitakona, thank you very much for speaking thank to me on State of the Nation.